I said that I will make a follow-up video, and here it is. If you haven't seen my first video on MS Estonia, I recommend you watch that first, because in this video I will jump right into the rabbit hole. As of now, there are no big updates regarding the new investigation of MS Estonia. There are obviously bigger things to worry about. I just hope that they will not forget that a new investigation is needed. However, the Swedish government recently said that it would allow a new underwater examination of MS Estonia. Therefore, the state secretary is planning on diving down to the wreck, but it will take time and a lot of preparations, as they state. Well, it's a good thing that we have gotten people talking again about this tragedy, and big role played this new documentary by Henrik Evertsen. I wanted to watch that documentary by the way, however it was not available in my country. I don't see a reasonable explanation for the big hole in the ship that was, and I'll say it again, not mentioned in any of the reports. Could it somehow have naturally formed after the sinking? Mm, from my understanding, it's impossible. Because of the angle of the hole, the place where the ship sank and the fact that the hole is bent inwards. A ship of that magnitude sinking in 30 minutes, I just can't comprehend it. The fact that during the original dives, they were requested to not recover any bodies, even though it was an easy job for them, is also noteworthy. We are just left to speculate for now. However, in this video I want to focus on the mysterious disappearance of some of the MS Estonia crew members that survived the disaster. But in order to do that, I need to tell you about enforced disappearances. As the name suggests, those are forced, sudden disappearances in a form of arrest, detention or abduction, later hiding or changing the information of the disappeared person. This is a crime against humanity. According to a Swedish journalist, Sven Anner, the MS Estonia original survivor list contained names of 146 individuals that included 11 crew members, however later their names all of a sudden disappeared from the survivors list. Apparently, there were at least 15 different survivor lists, and all of them included those 11 crew member names. And keep in mind, to be on the list you had to give your name, date of birth, status and nationality when rescued. And apparently, none of those crew members, a few days later after the incident, were abducted and taken to Arlanda airport near Stockholm and there they were taken somewhere on two private aircrafts. And the people who disappeared were key people. They were crew members, meaning that they could potentially give key information about the ship's condition. Let me tell you the names of some of these people. Avo Picht, who was one of the ship's captains. Although he was not on duty that night, he was on the ship. Tina Moore, tax-free salesperson, Lambert Wager, the chief engineer, Victor Bogdano, ship's doctor, Kaimar Kikes, fort officer, Merit Kikes, wife, Agur Targama, fort engineer, Hanneli Anne Weide, entertainer, Hanka Hanika Weide, dancer, Ago Tomingas, shop assistant, Kahlal Patras, storekeeper. Some people believe that they were rescued either by helicopter Y64 or the ship Mariella or the ship Silvia Europa. During the early media covers, it shows some interesting details. Where they talk about Kenneth Swenson, one of the many heroes of the night, it says that he rescued 8 people from the sea. However, the next day the same story was changed from Kenneth saving 8 people to 6 people and 9 persons were in the helicopter altogether one of whom was already dead. They arrived at the Hadinj hospital at 4.30 am, and this is the best part, there is no public information of who they were. According to the official report, there is a whole story about Kenneth Swenson that he managed to save only one person in the Y-64 helicopter, then, because of the extreme weather, he fell into the sea to be rescued by another helicopter, Y-74, which then Kenneth managed to continue his saving duty and rescuing six more people. This therefore suggests that there was an act of misinformation about the Y64 helicopter and its survivors. 
And then there is another mystery of how many people were rescued via the ship Mariella and the ship Celia Europa. Some say Mariello rescued 18 persons, and that 9 or 11 persons came abroad by helicopter OHHVG. Celia Europa saved 14 persons and 3 are unknown or unidentified. Basically, there are different reports about how many people were rescued. Official report says that Mariello rescued 15 persons from rafts, received 11 persons by helicopter and sent one person to Finland via helicopter. So let's talk about the people we know the names of that allegedly survived and were the victims of enforced disappearance or the undead survivors. Avo Picht was seen helping passengers with life jackets during the sinking on deck 7 after he was seen in a life raft together with Hanneli Veide and Hanka Hannika Veide, two other undead survivors. In a Swedish news report, helicopter crew told the press that the second ship's captain, Avo Picht, was rescued. On other Swedish television news program, Aktu Elt, it was reported that Ronald Bergman, director of the Swedish firm that co-owned the vessel had called them and informed that Avopicht had indeed survived and is being treated in a Finnish hospital, and that the International Investigation Committee had even interviewed Avopicht. According to Estonian researcher Jutta Rabe, German television network ZDF even captured the moment when Avopicht and other survivors arrived at the Turku University Hospital in Finland. However, this video was later confiscated by German intelligence agents. And I found this video of allegedly Avo Picht being rescued by an ambulance. But the video quality is not clear enough to actually identify if the person is indeed Picht. Lembe Twager's wife was informed by a relative that a Swedish police superintendent had called them and that her husband had survived and that he is being treated in Stockholm's Hodinge Hospital and would be released on September 29th. The next day Mrs. Lager spoke to the superintendent herself to get details about Lager's return to Tallinn, but he never returned home. Kalev Vachtras is another mystery. Again, he was confirmed alive on several lists until 30th of September when autopsy confirmed that he drowned. Well, we know that he was at least on a life raft, that was confirmed by a survivor, Peter Palgunov, who shared the same life raft. Wachter's wife, Ruth, also suggests the possibility that Kalev was rescued by the same helicopter as Avo Picht, and that after the autopsy the body was returned to her, however, Ruth didn't believe that it was her husband. Furthermore, a surviving seaman by the name Silver Linde says that he shared the same hospital room with Kalev in the Turku hospital. He says that they were friendly and talked to each other and that Kalev didn't have serious injuries, just that his body temperature was pretty low as he was wrapped in blankets. Linde then went to visit other survivors that were in the hospital and when he returned with another crew member, Kalev was nowhere to be seen. His entire bed was gone. Linde proceeded to ask a nurse where did Kalev go and was told that he had been transferred to another hospital. And Silver Linde, who gave this extraordinary information, was in a 9 year prison sentence in Finland for apparently drug trafficking. Tina Mur was also on some of the survivor lists for a few days. Some believe that she was rescued via Mariello and brought to Sweden, however she went missing. Her body was also never found, Finnish authorities listed her as missing. Viktor Bogdanov, his wife, received a phone call, where on the other end was one of the survivors, Andres Vichmara, who explained the situation and that Viktor had survived and that he is with him on Mariello. He was also on some of the survivor lists at first, but later was classified as missing. And a little comment on this one. Why didn't the wife of Victor ask to speak to him through phone personally, unless he was being treated and couldn't speak at the time, or maybe Andres, the caller, mistook the person to be Victor Bogdanov. Hanneli and Hanka Veide 
Their parents are convinced that they both survived because after the incident they received several calls from one of the daughters, but the calls were interrupted. Some survivor lists included one of the sisters surviving, other lists included both of them surviving, but at the end both of them are listed as missing. Kaimar Kikas, who was reported as a survivor on Estonian Radio 2 and in a fax from Estaline and Estonian Social Ministry. Well, he never returned to Estonia, although a month after the disaster an anonymous person called Kaimar's parents and said that they are coming home. Who is they? Well, apparently it's the son and his wife Merit. John Lindquist, who works for Sweden's Civil Aviation Administration, provided some interesting information that two private planes that were in the Stockholms around the airport flew away carrying nine unregistered passengers in total on the 28th and 29th September 1994. First plane, Boeing 727-200, belonged to a company that was owned by Lars Erik Magnusson that was also a casino owner. It arrived from Amsterdam on September 27th evening and flew away at 8.54 pm on September 28th and four unregistered passengers were on the plane. Second plane, Gulfstream 4, belonged to International Lease Finance Corp. It arrived at 11 pm from Amsterdam on September 28th and left at 5.13 pm on the 29th September and five unregistered passengers were transported. Some people believe that these planes are connected to the catastrophe and could indicate enforced disappearance. Both planes taking the undead survivors out of the country and possibly silencing them. So, real enforced disappearances or silly mistakes that led to misinformation. You see, I am a fan of critical thinking. I like to provide some information and then give my thoughts about it. And this case is no exception. The survivor's list could have differed the first few days because the tragedy was fresh and there was a lot of chaos. However, the coincidence that the undead list involved only crew members is somewhat weird. So how did they get on those lists in the first place? You know, some of these crew members, I believe, did actually die in the catastrophe and it's the disbelief of their beloved ones that they were on the survivors list but after a few days it turns out that that was a mistake and it was a big mistake from media and it really did hurt. It only requires one media outlet to get some piece of information until a lot more jump on it and it starts to turn into a fact but what if that fact at the end of the day is wrong? There is just more evidence that those persons died in the disaster rather than surviving and then disappearing again with little to no evidence that they survived in the first place. So if this is government's job and I'm wrong, then good job to them, I guess. Although one of these undead crew members, I do indeed want to believe that they survived. I will pick. Because how on earth can you put such high-ranked individual on the survivors list and it turns out false? What I am looking for is the proof that you had to state your name and surname personally to get on the survivors list. What if that was wrong and some survivors actually stated names of people they thought were with them but actually weren't? I have read a interview where one of the survivors stated that Ava Picht was seen giving comments to people and helping others to get their life vests on. So he was active during the ship's sinking and was seen by a lot of people, therefore suggesting that he must have survived, but the truth may be a lot more tragic. However, what surprised me is that allegedly Picht even gave interview to that media outlet. This means that someone must have seen that interview, so if there is no physical version of it, then at least someone who saw it could have remembered that it existed, well, at least in their memory, and would have spoken up by now. But the thing about the two private airplanes is one mysterious detail that I can't entirely explain. My only question would be, is it really tied to the MS Estonia disaster? Well, it would be 100% if an enforced disappearance was confirmed, but no one will confirm that stuff. During this research, what bothered me is the lack of information about these undead Estonians I found. And during my first video research, I didn't even know about them until I stumbled across some YouTube comments that made me do this research in the first place. And what confused me is the contradictions that came from survivors. 
So the interview that I read said that none of the survivors can confirm that they saw any of the crew members after being rescued that are the undead survivors. But then I see other media outlets mentioning that other survivors did see Kala Vachtras and did see Viktor Bogdanov and some of the others. So someone is lying here. Anyway, I'm making this video to present you this information and you can make your own conclusions and uh, share them with me if you wish. But for now, the research and the truth about MS Estonia remains one big question mark.